Did you know that we have a scales function built right into GarageBand on iPhone and iPad and it doesn't matter if you don't know your G sharps from your A flats, anyone can use it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how, let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome back to my GarageBand Quick Jam series. And yes, scales are not just those boring things you play when you're learning piano. They can actually be super useful when you're creating projects here in GarageBand. And GarageBand has a built-in scale function that you can use on a heap of your different instruments. So let's dive in now and take a look. The scale option here in GarageBand is available in our keyboard and most of our smart instruments as well. Let's look at it in the keyboard first of all. We're gonna tap on the keyboard and now in the top right corner, you'll notice that we have a note option here if we tap on these two notes the third from the right we go into our scale option and here we can choose from any of our major our minor our blues and even some other more eccentric scales that we have available here in GarageBand let's use the guitar now to demonstrate where the scales option is in our other touch instruments so you can either just tap on scales in the bottom here or if we go into our regular guitar if you're already in this view what you need to do is tap to get rid of over here on the right we'll tap this blue button to take us back to our notes view as opposed to our chords and now we tap on the scale button in the top right and we're back to this display now let's turn this one into our major scale by tapping on the major button and here you'll notice that the display has changed into our scale view here on the guitar. Let's look at selecting the scales option in one more virtual instrument. We'll use the strings this time and this time we're going to tap on the scales button at the bottom of our string selector. So let's tap that now and this time it's going to take us straight into the scale view for our strings. But there's one more cool thing that it's done. Let's tap on this major button here and you'll notice there's a dot next to the major scale. That's telling us we've already selected the major scale in our guitar or in another virtual instrument track and that saves us from having a bunch of different virtual instruments playing in a bunch of different scales or keys. So another cool feature that GarageBand has to keep our songs sounding great. So how do we play using the scales view? Well, here we are in a keyboard view and you'll notice that we have these bars here and each bar represents a different note in the scale, starting with our root notes that are these darker colored ones and going in between with the lighter colored ones. So we can now play chords and we can play different melodies knowing that we're always going to be hitting notes that are within the E major key signature. Very cool. So what about our other virtual instruments? Well, the layout is very similar, but it does vary slightly by instrument. Here we are in our guitar, and you can see again that we've got these different colored squares, and this time the light colored squares are the root note of our chord, our E major, and we can play our scale in between these two. But because we're on a guitar, we have six strings, we have a limited range, you'll notice here that when we tap on these ones, it plays the same note on each string. And then the top three in the top right are our higher E and our low E is down here. So we've actually only got three, three and a half octaves of range here on our guitar. And to explain why it's laid out like this and how this works, let's jump over to me showing you on the real guitar. So on our guitar fretboard, our E is our bottom string. It's also our top string. But if we play the 12th fret here, that is our next E up, but it's also the seventh fret on our second string and the second fret on our third string. So this explains why we have these same things because we can actually play that same note on three different strings just in different parts on the fretboard. And then our highest note is the 12th fret on the E. So we can get effectively four octaves in most standard guitars. So this is why here in GarageBand, we have our layout where we have the same notes on some of those different strings because it's matching or mirroring what we have on a real guitar. Thanks for that, Pete. I couldn't have explained it better myself. Now, you'll notice that we've only explored the major scale here. Now, there's all of these other scales that we don't have time in this video to look at, but I've got a recommendation for you. Dan Baker over on his channel has an amazing video where he goes through each one of these scales and tells you all about them. So I'll link to that video up the top there now and also down in the description. And there you go, scales. How cool are they and how easy are they to implement in your tracks in GarageBand? If you've got any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you missed the last episode of GarageBand Quick Jams, you can click on the link on the bottom left there. Or if you want to catch up on the whole series, click on the link on the bottom right. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today link in the top right corner or head to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.